Mark Sorensen joins us, multiple winner of World Championship titles as a player. He's the coach of the Black Sox. Opening ceremony tomorrow. World Champs underway. Rosedale Park in Auckland. Never gets tiring. This doesn't, mate. Never gets tiring. No, it doesn't. I mean, coming out to the park today and seeing what they've done at uh, Rosedale Park really uh, sends shivers down your spine. They've built it up. and It's going to be a real cauldron here, and we'll be looking forward to the fans to get in behind us and help us uh, you know, get a couple of extra runs per game. All right, opening matches against the Czech Republic, mate. How tough are they going to be? Well, the Czech are, are a developing nation, and they're the champions of Europe. Um, they actually beat us last week in a, in a warm-up tournament. Um, Last game of a five game, we played five tests in, in one weekend, which is un, unusual. Uh, they, they're a type of team that, if we don't come with our A game, they will they will give us some some problems. But you know, I'm really excited and, and confident that um, you know there, there'll, there'll be no lack of motivation. Certainly coming out tomorrow, opening game. Who hey, talk us through some of your aces, mate? Starting starting with the pitching staff. Well, we've got a, a, a three prong pitching staff. Um, our two. Frontline pitchers, uh, Josh Pettit and, and Daniel Chapman. Uh, the Wellington, uh, D- Josh Pettit, Wellington won the national provincial title recently and, and beat the Auckland team where Daniel Chapman pitches for. Uh, and they're, they're suitably backed up by Pitta Rona, who's uh, the son of legend Brad Rona. Um, and he offers something a little bit different. We'll be using him in a, a relief pitching situation. Um, you know, the boys have all trained uh, ext- extremely hard over the last 12 months and, and especially coming in these last six months through the winter months and, and since we've been together now for three weeks. So, you know, there's one base you can't steal at first, but once we get on first, we're looking to create some havoc. And you're hitting who? Who are the, who are the, uh, who are the uh, big uh, boppers? Oh, look, we're, I'd like to think we're, we're pretty consistent and deep right across the board, but, you know, we'll be looking for our leaders, the you know, the Anoka boys, um, our captain Cole Evans, um, Jerome Ramaki, you know, guys through the middle of our lineup that have been to a few World Cups before. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be looking for their experience, and you know, they've, they've had success in the US as well on the on the US circuit. So, you know, we're looking for those guys to be our leaders, um, and the guys that are going to clean the table with with uh, the exciting young fast guys that are coming to set the table ahead of them. Mark Sorensen is with us, Black Sox men's coach, and it all kicks off tomorrow. Man, they stack and pack this tournament into a short space of time, mate. There's no room to breathe, is there? You go through those those uh, round robin matches, you're straight into the into the into the playoffs after that. All takes place in just over a week. It does indeed, and you know, one game a day. The good thing about that is you get into a bit of a routine. Um, each day you're able to go through your practices in the morning, you do the game reviews, a little bit of time to reflect and prepare in the afternoon. And then uh, other than the opening weekend, most of our games are 7.30 at night. So, you know, it allows you to get set and into a bit of a routine. Mark, you've had so, the weather in Auckland has been atrocious over the last well, God, six or seven, eight weeks. I mean, so what are the contingencies for rain? Well, I'm going to learn a little bit more about that today, Marty, at, uh, at the technical meeting, because it is something that... Um, as a concern as to what they're going to do. They do, games don't start till the afternoon, you know, so they do have an option to slot in one or two games in the morning. They've got two fields here, so the 12 teams will play their games um, on, on either the one or two diamond uh, through the afternoon, early evening. So there is space at the start of the day if they, they get affected by rain, but we'll learn a little bit more about how they plan to manage that this afternoon. Also, let's go through some of is is it is it the the traditional opponents? I know Argentina are the, are the defending champs, but I look at Japan in this, and I look at the United States in this. I look at Australia and things, and, and Canada. Are these opponents still amongst the toughest? Absolutely, yep, no, for sure. The, the Japanese played really well uh, last weekend in Palmerston. Um, the Australians actually won the event, uh, but you know you can't really read too much into it. The event before it'll give them a little bit of confidence moving in. But, you know, in terms of legitimacy, I, I think there's, in all honesty, I think there's five or six teams that are going to make a run at um, at this title here. You know, uh, it's, it's as competitive as I've ever seen. And you look at where the, all the countries come from. I mean, people, if you don't think softball is played, Argentina, the Czech Republic, States, Cuba, the Philippines, you've got Canada, Japan, Denmark, South Africa, Venezuela. You're touching every continent on earth, mate. Well, everybody has qualified geographically, so... You know, there are some good countries that have missed out. You know, Great Britain, um, there's uh, Singapore from Asia. You've, you've got uh, Mexico, who beat us at the last World Cup. They, they didn't qualify from the Americas. So, 
you know, it is a spread uh, around the world and it's a, a decent representation. Mark, with all the experience that you've had playing as playing and winning, what do you what do you pass on to your team? Because obviously you want to calm them down, you want to focus them, you know that they're actually good enough to do this. What kind of words do you say to them? Well, the focus we're trying to look at at the moment, Marty, is is, is about being in the now, um, you know, and, and taking care of today. Control the things that we can control. Um, and anything that needs any action, put it into place straight away. So, you know, it's about trusting the skills and talent that, you know, we've all developed from five, six, seven at the local ballpark, you know, and that's all we're doing is we're, you know, we're hitting a round ball with a round bat. The pitchers have played catch with their, their catches since they've been kids, and we're trying to normalise it as much as possible. And what kind of a fan base are you expected to turn up? Oh, we're looking for a, a big crowd, at, you know, uh, indications are that uh, it's going to be a bit of a softball reunion for the softballing public from around the country. A lot of people are coming in, uh, maybe some opening weekend, then, then a lot are coming in from um, midweek looking to go through the second weekend. So we're looking forward to seeing um, some faces of the past, but also uh, we'll catch up with them after the event. Hopefully not. Uh, there won't be a great deal of time during it, but we're looking forward to the support that they're going to provide us uh, along the way. You're one of the most winningest teams in, in New Zealand sport. I mean, you know, just, you know, when you stack it up, 96, 00, 04, second and 09, 1 and 13, second and 15, 1 and 17, okay, 219, bolt up. But you look at those, they, I mean, that's an incredible line of basically overachieving. I mean, it's, it's bigger than overachieving. Oh, look, we, we set high standards and we have high expectations of ourselves. So, you know, that, that um, does add some pressure. You know, we've talked to the guys that, you know, putting on this Black Sox jersey comes with a lot of expectation and it's a heavy jersey to wear. But, you know, we don't want them doing anything more than the skills and talents that they use to get into this team. You know, and, and as I talked about before, being in the moment um, and living for that moment and embracing it because in nine days' time, it's going to be all over and everybody's going to be heading home. You've always hunkered down like that as a team, haven't you? When you were playing, it was exactly the same thing. You're such a, a tight unit. It's, it's, you know, you, we've gone to a lot of events over the years, and there's been very few that we've been, uh, I guess, on paper the most talented team there. But you know, we, we spend a lot of time off the diamond on trying to pull the guys together as a unit, you know, and, and hunting like a pack. But you know, collectively, if we come together and, and we put our best foot forward for the use of a pun. Um, you know, we're going to be tough to beat, but it's about taking care of those little things. Um, you know, they say success comes from a thousand little moments. Well, we've been working on those thousand little moments over the last like, last couple of years because there was a long uh, time in between drinks. Mm. No, I've always thought you're one of my favourite New Zealand sports teams. I'm, I'm a from the from the absolute excellence, but also B because you just get knuckled down and do it. I remember I go back to you were in South Africa staying in some rat infested cockroach hostel. Remember, <laughs> remember that one? Yeah. I do remember, yeah, I was there. Four guys to a room, bars on the windows, guys patrolling the, the complex with uh, pump action shotguns. So, yeah, that, that brings a dose of reality to it. But it has, it's, it's never stopped you, has it? I mean, whether, you know, you don't do it for the money, there's just such a love of this team and what, and what it means. Oh, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're from a small sport, but, you know, the guys are just, you know, very proud New Zealanders and, and very humble and, you know, honoured to be able to put on the jersey and go out and represent New Zealand. And, and now it's about um, representing it with pride and putting out good performances. Mark, you are such a fantastic player. Are you a better coach than a player? Jesus, players would have to tell you that, mate. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's a bit of a struggle in the beginning when I first took over because you, you're so used to being able to influence a game with, with the bat and the ball when now it's about, you know, the preparation of the athletes and the way that you go out and you know, the strategy that you provide um, and guidance and support. And, and at the moment, it's not so much about a technical thing. It, it's more about mental preparation. So I don't know, I, you know, I, I'd like to think I've grown and learned as a, as a coach and in and, and some stages reinvented myself just to, to make sure that, you know, I'm relevant to the current day athletes. So, you know, we're all on a learning journey and, and I'm certainly no different. Well, you, as I say, you wore, you've worn that jersey with such pride. Um, all the very best of luck, mate. Um, you know, you kick it off against the Czech Republic. Take it a day at a time from there, and let's hope in a week's time that you're standing on top of the podium. All the very best of luck, mate. Thanks, Marty. Nice to chat.